Awesome. All right. Once again, welcome everybody to the UCLA School of Nursing. This is the Recruitment Admissions um, and Outreach Office, or Recruitment Outreach and Admissions Office. There's three words. We do all three. It doesn't matter the order of how you say it. Um, but just want to say, again, thank you for joining us for our admissions information session. All right. My name is Dr. Mark Coven. I'm the Director of Recruitment Outreach and Admissions. You're seeing my amazing team here right below me is Natalie Asensio. And then right below her, I have Jamie Gama. And so that's what it looks like on my screen. Hopefully it looks the same for yours. Um, but this is our A team. We're a wonderful group of three um, who are gonna be assisting everyone um, with the process of applications, providing information about the program, everything that you need. I'm gonna move some of this stuff here. Okay, so today's purpose, right, is to make sure that we can provide you with information about our Bachelor of Science um, in the field of nursing. Okay, so it's our Bachelor of Science, our BSN, and it's going to be designed for individuals who may be in high school and are entering their senior year, maybe a few weeks into your senior year, maybe you're a sophomore or junior just preparing for the future. But this program is going to be for those that are in high school applying as seniors to enter as a freshman as well as for transfer students who have already graduated high school and maybe at a community college, maybe even another four-year university. So we do offer admissions for our freshman entry as well as transfer entry. This is a pre-licensed program. And so what do we mean by pre-licensed? You will be entering our program without your RN license. That is gonna be on us to prepare you um, to go through the program as well as your theory, didactic, lecture, skills lab, simulation lab, uh, clinical rotation, the whole nine, right? We're gonna prepare you to be successful. So upon graduating, you will be eligible to sit for the NCLEX, which is the national um, license exam to receive your registered nurse license. So you'll be able to do it in any state. So of course, we will be preparing you here in the state of California, but if you want to go to another state, you will be able to sit for that board. So that is exciting. Okay, so for today's agenda, it is going to be a little bit off because uh, we're not going to have our student panel. Uh, we are actually doing something separate with that, so I'll explain in a little bit. But so I'll continue on um, talking about the curriculum and introduction. I will actually be going over the application process. Um, and then we have Leonie Thomas, who is our director of financial aid. She has an amazing video that she put together. Um, and so we'll go ahead and play that for you. And then we do typically have a student panel, but what we're going to do different this year is we're actually going to be um, uh, reaching out to our current students and alum, and we're going to be having a separate kind of student panel that we're going to record separately, and we're going to put it on our website. So look forward to that. Uh, we think the panel in itself should be separated um, because that's a, a way of being able to really get good insight in terms of why our students decided to apply why they decided to enter, what it's like being a student, um, and then also, you know, what are they doing after graduating? So look forward for that coming uh, hopefully later this month. And then we're going to make sure that we're going to finish answering any questions that we can for you before we leave today. So the goal is to get you out before seven. I promise to make sure that that happens. All right. Okay. So uh, next here, we have our simulation lab. So each student um, that enters our, our school of nursing um, we'll be privy to our simulation lab, and it's pretty amazing. Uh, so we do have a quick short video that I'm going to send, or I'm going to show you guys. But basically what our mannequins do is they replicate what it's going to be like to be in a hospital setting, right? So it's really cool. Our mannequins, they talk, they breathe, of course, they bleed, they give birth. They pretty much do the whole nine. But it's a really cool way of simulating what it's going to be like in a clinical environment uh, while they're seeing patients. So of course our students are gonna immerse themselves within the simulation lab, get their practice going before we actually send them out to do their clinical rotations. So let me pause this for a quick second. I'm going to do a new share and I'm going to show the video, which is on YouTube. So give me a quick second here. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to press play. Good morning, how are you? Good to see you this Hi, morning. Hi, do you have the discharge instructions? Yeah, yeah we're just, I'm just gonna pass off and Nora's gonna be taking care of the discharge instructions. I'll gonna, be the nurse yeah. taking care of you today. We're gonna start an extra line on you. Here at UCLA School of Nursing, simulation is a very important piece of the training. 
takes a student out of a lecture hall and puts them more into a clinical setting. We have mannequins that have ability to mimic a lot of different patient aspects. They're able to breathe, their chest rises, they have coughing, wheezing, lung sounds, crackles. A lot of the higher tech mannequins actually sweat. We can change their pupil sizes and by computer we also can change any vital sign similar to a real patient. It's a way to get the students more engaged and to get those clinical experiences uh, such that they don't have to actually practice on real patients. ICU simulations are to mimic the environment in an ICU, to add some extra stress, to add some extra equipment that the nurses have now been trained on, and then depict some kind of event that would be typical for an ICU and see how they can react to that event and intervene to make the patient better. There's a lot of instances where things happen right away, you have to respond right away. It's been able to help me practice my emotions, help me practice how I deal with things. What's great about simulation is that the student actually gets immersed into a situation. When they get to the ICU environment, it's not foreign to them. The leadership simulation that we do is done for senior students who are nearing graduation. We have five patient beds with mannequins simulating an actual clinical floor. You come in and your nurse will give you maybe like a fast report, they have to go somewhere. He's a 60 year old male that was admitted several days ago for an exacerbation of his asthma. You go to your patient rounds and you go, first patient, okay, you check on them. How are you feeling? Are you like dizzy? Yeah. But then you hear like a bell from another, another room. Okay, I'll let her know. I'll be quick, okay. The goal is to give them a little bit of stress because we want them to be able to think as a nurse and to be able to think on their feet. So Mr. Salter, you're having um, very low blood pressures. It can certainly be that chaotic during the day and that's why we have this for practice to put us in those situations so we can learn how to think, what to do. After each of the simulations, it's really important to come together and have a debriefing. The whole point of the debriefing really is for them to reflect on what they were thinking when they did different things, and then if they would do anything different, how would they do it different? It's really helped us um, boost our confidence and also helped apply everything we learned in the books to what we see in the real world. The goal of simulation here at UCLA is to send students out into the clinical world more prepared and better able to tackle some of the more difficult types of cases that they're going to come upon. Awesome. All right. Hopefully you guys got a good idea, um, a quick snippet um, in terms of uh, what it's like to be in a simulation lab before you actually start the clinical practice. Okay, so we'll continue moving forward. Okay. Move some of this out the way. So, okay, there we go. All right. So again, um, like I stated before, this program is designed for high school students that are in their senior year, um, as well as transfer students who would wish to enter our nursing program. For those that are going to be applying for freshman admission out of high school, this is a four-year program. Okay. In the four years, the first two years pretty much includes your general education courses. Um, there are going to be some nursing courses as well throughout your first two years. Um, but you will not start pretty much immersing yourself and diving fully into the nursing program until your junior year, as well as your clinical rotations. Um, but we do have specific courses. We do have within the next few slides, a sample course sequence. So we'll go ahead and go into a little bit more in depth about that as well. For transfers, uh, we currently have a three-year program. Okay, so as you go through, um, and again, I'll talk about the admission requirements for transfers. But once you apply, you're an admitted, it's going to take three years. Uh, if you guys do not know, UCLA classes are on the quarter system. Okay, so each quarter is about 10 weeks. We do move a little bit faster than semesters. So if you're used to semesters and may have some siblings that are used to semesters, we do move a little bit faster. So for each quarter, it's 10 weeks. So in an in academic year, uh, we have a fall quarter, a winter quarter, and a spring quarter. There's some pluses and some minus about being on the quarter system, right? Um, something that's difficult about a quarter system is that you may have an intern in week, week three or week four, right? So it creeps up on you really fast. Um, so, you know, the good thing about it is if there's a class that you don't particularly like, it's going to be over uh, within about uh, two months, uh, about two months, yeah, and a half, I should say. Um, so it, it happens really fast. You will get used to it, but it does take some adjustment. I do see that last bullet that you guys are really looking at um, is how many students we admit per year. So our goal is to admit 40 freshmen per year 
and about 20 plus for transfers. For the past year, for the past two years, we've been able to admit 26 transfers per year. Um, and so again, in total, it would be about 66, but it is separated by admissions. Those that apply for freshman admission are looked at separately than those that apply for transfer admission. So again, uh, we admit 40 freshmen per year and about 20, 26 transfers per year. Okay, so a lot of people ask why UCLA? Um, and I always like to give this really good example because I think it really gives a good outline in terms of why we think we are one of the top nursing programs. Um, one thing is the community, right? And so if you've ever stepped foot on campus, right, you would see how big UCLA is. But with that, UCLA has tons of resources, right? Um, we can go as far as talking about Ronald Reagan, which is our uh, medical center, the number one hospital on the West Coast. Uh, we have our own transportation. We have our own police department, right, in terms of safety for campus. Uh, we have grocery stores. We have places to eat, places to hang out, places to shop. We want to make sure that once you step foot on campus and around the village, that you will have everything at your disposal. If we were to say, okay, now UCLA offers everything, what about the School of Nursing? Same thing. As you guys just saw that we admit 40 freshmen and 66 transfers, we are pretty much a small program. But along with our undergraduate program, we also have graduate programs. So in about total, we have a little bit over 600, probably close to about 650 students or so. Compared to other departments and majors on campus, we are small, but we are mighty. And so what do I mean by that? We have tons of resources available for our nursing undergraduate students. One, as you guys saw in one of the first couple of slides, we have our own director of financial aid, Lauren Thomas. This is something that we offer in our department that many others do not. And if you had questions about financial aid, scholarships, maybe even possibly loans, you would have to go to upper campus and go to the registrar's office and set up a meeting and pretty much put in the ticket as if you're a member not here in the School of Nursing. She knows everyone by name, um, just like everyone else in terms of our faculty and leadership and administration. Other resources, uh, you will have your own student service coordinator who is an individual who's gonna be setting you up and making sure that you're progressing from quarter to quarter, from year to year. Of course, you're gonna have your own faculty advisor. We have specialty coaches, which are individuals who have gone through the program, who have come back, right, to help tutor and teach our students, given a different perspective um, besides what they're learning from their lecturers and faculty members. We also have a mentorship program, which is really cool as well. What we like to do is match up you as an individual as you're entering your first year and match up with a second year, right? And so the cool thing about the mentorship program is that one, uh, you're already automatically having a friend or learning or, or com you know, committing to having a new friend and classmate, but then also with that, they can give you ins and outs of the program, right? Um, what classes, may be tougher than others, what classes you may have to study more. Um, they may be able to pass down books or scrubs and things of that nature. So we do find value in our mentorship program. Uh, we have resources in terms of students uh, with disabilities. The campus has resources for all types of students. And we wanna make sure that in the School of Nursing, we offer that as well. Also, just really fast, something that came to mind. UCLA offers other things in terms of entertainment, in terms of joy, right? So we definitely encourage students to participate not only in clubs, uh, which you'll see in probably the next couple of slides, uh, but maybe fraternities, sororities, uh, playing sports, in the mills, joining music, band, um, or just laying out on the lawn, going to the sculpture garden, going to the botanical garden, right? There's just so many things, seeing a sports game. Um, so again, we wanna make sure that once you join the campus and you immerse yourself, that it's gonna be the time of your life. And with that, we think, well, we should say, what I should say, not think, we know um, by all the things that we offer for our students in terms of being successful, we are recognized as being one of the top nursing schools. And that is by US News and World Reports. Okay, so let's talk about some of the goals of the program, right? So one is we wanna make sure that we're gonna educate and provide a new workforce of RNs. As you guys know, there is a shortage of nurses. And so we wanna make sure that every year, the students that we admit, if they go ahead and follow through within their three years as a transfer, or four years when they enter as a fresh or yep, as they enter as a freshman, they'll be able to graduate and we will be able to prepare them, right, 
um, to not only graduate faster in CLEX, um, but go ahead and foot set, you know, out there in the new workforce. We want to make sure that in that we're going to provide new clinical leaders. They're really big on leadership, right? Not only within the classroom setting, but out there in the clinical setting. We want to make sure that also our graduates are going to be well prepared to deal with high tech and high acuity settings. Okay. With that, what you're seeing below me are just some of the hospitals that we're affiliated with that we love to send our students to in terms of their clinical rotations. Um, no particular order. We have Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. We have CHLA, which is Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, um, Children's Memorial, which is down the 405 South, if you're used to Los Angeles, up to pretty much um, Dignity Health, which is Northridge Hospital Medical Center. Of course, we're going to send our students to Cedars, UCLA uh, Health, which is Ronald Reagan, again, as I mentioned, or um, Santa Monica, VA, Kaiser, and so forth. And so the reason why we have all these partnerships is because we want to make sure that our students are going to be able to immerse themselves again in different settings, right? You may have an idea in terms of what type of nurse you want to be. Maybe you want to work with children. Um, and so pediatrics may be what you're thinking about. And so with that, we want to make sure that we give you the opportunity of doing rotations at CHLA or even Mattel. Or maybe you want to work with veterans um, or adults. And so we're going to make sure that we're going to be able to provide that for you. Okay, so let's think about student life, right? And so some of the things I was kind of mentioning in terms of kind of immersing yourself out there at UCLA, the same can be done here in the School of Nursing. So here are just some of our undergraduate nursing student associations, again, not limited to. And so you're seeing the names of them on the left and the cool logos that they've all created here on the right side. Um, and so we have um, Global Action in Nursing, uh, so GAIN, and I'll talk a little bit about this because um, there may be some questions out there. So unfortunately, students are not able to do study abroad um, for various reasons, um, but to simplify it uh, because of policies and you know, stipulations, our students are not able to um, go to different parts of the world to actually practice, right, in different hospital settings. So all that's gonna obviously be clear. But if you want to participate in GAIN, our students do have the opportunity if it's spring break or sometime during winter break or maybe even the summer, go to different parts of the world. Um, we've gone to places in South America, um, in Africa, we've gone to Uganda. And students, again, will go to about you know, 10 days worth with a couple of our faculty members um, and provide you know, assistance to um, places in need. Um, so that part is really cool. Uh, we have Panza, which is Pan-African. We have Lanza, which is the, our Latinx. Um, we have wellness and nursing, we have men in nursing, we have bot spectrum, which is our LBGTQ, uh, plus IA, um, and we have tons of other ones. Capenza, which is for our Asian community as well. Um, and so again, this is something that we definitely recommend uh, you join. And of course you could join more than one, uh, but we definitely want you to convert yourself once you become a student here at UCLA. Okay, so let's talk about the course sequence. Um, First, but we're going to talk about the clinical experience first, right? So as you enter as a transfer, um, actually, let's first start talk about as you enter as a freshman. Okay. So when you enter as a freshman, year three or your third year is when you're going to start your clinical rotations. If you come in as a transfer, it will be year two. And so that's why you're seeing that here in parentheses. So again, as you're starting for your respective year, your fall quarter is where you're going to do uh, fundamentals, message A. Winter quarter is fundamentals of MedSearch B. Spring quarter, again, we're going to finish that up with MedSearch C. You do have to come somewhere in between, um, basically year three to year four or year two to year three, uh, depending on, again, how you're going to be entering. And with that, it's going to be the only summer that you'll have to come in. But you will be doing an eternity in peace. It's a pretty cool um, rotation. Uh, you will be, you know, helping new mothers with the birth of their children. So that part is fun. Then you're going to finish it up in your last year. Again, with fall quarter, which is mental health. So you'll be doing a psychiatric rotation. Winter quarter is going to be critical care and public health. So we're going to be sending you out to different parts of LA um, to learn more about the public health sector. So again, if it is Skid Row, you know, down here in downtown LA, or if you're going to be going to different companies and learning about, you know, water pollution, you know, 
uh, and other things like that. Uh, that's what our students do, um, and they find some joy in that. Then you're going to finish up your last quarter of your time here in the School of Nursing, and it's going to be immersion. And so at this point, you're no longer um, going to be required to have any classroom or kind of classroom work. But at this point, as you've gone through almost your four years and your three years, and then almost your two years of clinical rotations, we have a clinical placement team where They'll ask you, all right, you're getting ready to finish up. Where do you potentially see yourself? And then at that point, you'll select a hospital of your choice um, as well as a floor of your choice. And with that, um, they do their best to match you up with that. And then you'll be working with your preceptor. Um, and with the preceptor, it's going to be simulating what it's going to be like, right, once you graduate. Um, um, once, you're, once you graduate, potentially, hopefully at that hospital, right? Um, and so with that, you're gonna be working your 12 hour shifts. If it's a day shift or it's a night shift, really simulating. Of course, you're gonna be with your preceptor, who's gonna be helping you, but it's a really good kind of jump start uh, before you actually graduate and immerse yourself. Once you graduate, our students actually do come back uh, that following Monday. We graduate them on a Saturday, they come back that following Monday uh, for a boot camp for an NCLEX preparation kind of boot camp with one of our faculty members, which is pretty awesome. Um, once our, again, once our students graduate, they go to the boot camp, and then they typically will take the NCLEX in the month of July or August. Okay. Um, so they do study for about another month and a half or so before they take the NCLEX. So we're excited about that. Okay, so let's talk about the sample course sequence. Um, and so oops, what you're seeing here is the uh, course sequence and academic plan for those that are entering as freshmen. And so we do have a set for your curriculum. Okay, so it's a little bit different if you have some older siblings or if you're a transfer and you're kind of thinking about, hey, I can set my own schedule. Unfortunately, it's not necessarily like that here in the school of nursing. So I think there's some good that comes with that is knowing, hey, if I need to graduate, I know exactly every single class I need to take. But we also have it in a sequence where we set it up in terms of your role, which you also take every single quarter. Okay, and so as you're seeing, if you were to enter year one as a freshman, um, the courses that you see with the end are nursing courses. So as I stated before, uh, even though you're gonna be taking most of your general education courses, we'll, we still immerse you in the nursing program. So N10 is an intro to nursing and social justice. You're gonna take math, English, as well as communications. You're gonna move on to winter quarter, which is the second part of uh, N20. You're gonna start your chemistry series. You're gonna have your math 3A, which is calculus, as well as either communications or psych again. Finishing up year one, um, you will have uh, your N13, which is human anatomy, the second part to chemistry, um, and then again, another GP in order to fulfill that. If you want, you can also take your first summer off, go back home, hang with your family, or as we say, it's recommended, if you want to finish up your last part of your chemistry series, that's 14C, as well as your life science 7A. If not, we will then end up making that be part of your fall quarter for year two. So again, you're seeing what it's going to look like for year two. If we move along for year three, this is where, as you see, you're going to see nothing but the end courses, right? So in 54B, with this, which is capital physiology, uh, in 152A, right, which is health emotions, and so forth. So this is where you fully immerse yourself within the nursing program from year three until when you finish up year four. Transfers, as you know, you're going to be coming in to complete a three-year program. Again, this is what you're seeing, it's kind of how it's outlined. So as transfers, which will probably show up on the next slide, you will have to complete your general education courses already at the current school that you're at. That way those are already knocked out. That way when you do enter as a transfer, you'll be able to start pretty much immersing yourself fully into the nursing program, starting from year one. For anyone that may have um, some questions again, or may want to see this sample course sequence, um, I do believe Jamie put the link to the different inf information session packets 
And so make sure, again, if you're interested in entering as a freshman, that you download that freshman packet or transfers, that you download the transfer packet, and it will have this sample course that's in here for you. Okay, so let's talk about what's required for our transfer applicants. So as I briefly stated, you will be required to complete, move this down here, you will be required to complete your GETI, which is basically your general education requirements. Okay, so that's gonna be your basic English, um, composition, critical thinking, it's gonna be your math, it's gonna be your arts and humanities, it's gonna be your social sciences, your uh, physiological as well as biological science, a foreign language, um, to complete the genes. We're also going to require that you also take our nursing prerequisites, okay? So with that, we're gonna require chemistry, which is gonna be about three semesters worth. It's gonna be your general, your inorganic and organic chemistry. We're gonna ask that you complete a separate human anatomy and a separate human physiology course. And then we have what we call life science courses, which you saw there, which is equivalent to life science 7A and 7C, but it's called cell and molecular biology and physiology and human biology. So these are the prerequisites in terms of what we require uh, for entry into the School of Nursing. Now on the right, we do have prerequisites that you can complete um, at the time of application, or you can wait and you can have these prerequisites added to your curriculum during your first year as a transfer and immersive program. That is calculus, communications, which is basically public speaking, an intro to psychology, and a microbiology. So again, let me emphasize, in order to transfer it into our program, you will be required to complete your general education requirements along with our nursing prerequisites. Now, these four prerequisites on the right can be completed uh, at the time of applying, or we'll make sure to input them in uh, within your first year in the school of nursing. Um, I know a lot of people ask, um, does it make my application more competitive if I have these four prerequisites completed already? Um, or will it hurt my application if I don't have them completed? And so to answer that question, it does not hurt or help your application if you have these prerequisites completed. We just wanna make sure that you will have these other prerequisites completed at the time of application. I know typically people also ask um, in terms of our transfer um, admissions, can you have these prerequisites outstanding while you apply? And so, yes, you can. So you can still apply and have these prerequisites either in progress or outstanding. We will ask that these chemistry, anatomy, physiology, and the life sciences be completed before you start the program in the fall. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick pause here because uh, I do see some questions here in the Q&A and I wanna see if I can answer some of these for you out loud. Okay, here's a question here. Uh, do you accept out-of-state students as transfers? And how competitive, and what is the percentage, uh, uh, how, sorry, how competitive and percentage are the successful applicants? Okay, so two-part question. Yes, we accept out-of-state students, so um, transfer students, I should say. So yes, you can apply from outside of the state. We have students that apply, even admitted students um, that are out of the state as well. Um, this is a competitive program, so I will talk about how competitive each program is, but yes, both are competitive, um, and so we do ask if you do submit a successful application, um, that in itself will make you competitive, but hold off on the competitive part um, and percentages because I will talk briefly about that. Okay, on average, how many AP classes do accepted high school students take? that enter our freshman program? That is a great question. Um, I do not know the average of APs, um, but let me speak a little bit about our, the AP uh, requirements. UCLA um, obviously accepts APs. Um, there is a certain score, depending on the class that you take, that UCLA will accept. Now, our nursing program is a little bit different, right, compared to other majors, because you did see that set curriculum. So let's say for instance, you've taken AP English and you received a score of like a four or a five. Uh, UCLA will accept 
um, that credit to go towards our English course. Um, and so if let's say if you were to come in with four or five APs, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that's four or five less classes that you'll be able to take once you're at UCLA. So you, um, in the School of Nursing. So you're not able to enter the School of Nursing if you want to enter as a freshman. And because of your, your AP credit, come in as sophomore standing. Now, because we have a set curriculum. So if you come in with AP courses, it can knock out some of those requirements. But then those courses end up becoming electives. Okay. And because you want to maintain your full-time status as a student, um, you're still going to be required to take either four or five classes each quarter. So it's a little bit different here in the School of Nursing where it's like, hey, I have enough APs. I can come in as sophomore standing. It doesn't work like that in the School of Nursing. It's good for other majors. Um, but we do accept APs. Um, we typically don't look or average out how many APs a student comes in um, because we have a set curriculum. So it does work a little bit different. Okay, someone's asking for the BSN curriculum, is calculus or statistics uh, more used? So you will actually be taking both in our program. So you will be taking a calculus course as well as a statistics course. Um, so both are gonna be used and required of you as you move along throughout the program. Um, let's see, what percentage of California residents are accepted into the nursing program? It's a good question. I would say we're over 90% um, that are admitted into our program. Um, and that is just based off, you know, majority of applicants are California applicants. So the more California applicants that apply, um, that's, typically that just means we're gonna be admitting more California residents as well. Um, in the School of Nursing, we don't have a preference where the individual applies from. They could be in-state, out-of-state, or even international. Um, but just off sheer numbers, we have more California residents that apply, so we typically admit more California residents. Okay. Oh, so good question. Someone's asking about the summer classes. Um, is it just clinicals or is there classes involved? So yes, there's still a class that's involved, so that's a great question. So even though you're going to be doing your, your uh, maternity and peds rotation, you're still going to be having classes as well. Um, and so yes. That summer, uh, that the year going into your last year, you will have classes as well as your clinical rotations. Here's a good question. Um, this one says, can our, our transfer students be able to do research on the side? So I'll, I'll um, broaden that and say our students that come in as transfers or freshmen, right, typically will have the opportunity of doing research um, on the side. Uh, probably not within your first year, but as you kind of continue on in year two, year three, you will be able to do research. If you want, you can piggyback off of our faculty who all have different types of research that they do. Um, so yes, you can get into their, you know, their research labs and then help them with their research. Um, and it's a really good way of maybe you know, sparking the interest to see if that's what you want to do uh, in the future. So research is definitely something you can do. Here's another good question someone is asking, what is the NCLEX password for us? We're also in the 90 percentile. Um, we are still waiting to hear back of our school uh, for our NCLEX uh, scores uh, for the students that just graduated this past June. They typically, again, take the exam um, if it's early end of July uh, into the month of August. So, you know, it's just been a few weeks, uh, but we're still waiting to hear back from the Board of uh, you know, Register Nursing. So we're hoping to get those scores. Um, but we're always at 90 percentile. And that's always first time pass rate as well. So, right, and that's typically how the, the scores work or the rate works, it's typically the first time a student takes it. But ultimately, all of our students will be able to see. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so it's also, okay, kind of asking, what is the ratio of California residents towards non um, in our freshman program? Mm -hmm. Again, if we're going to be admitting, you know, over 90% of our students, that is pretty much also the ratio um, that's involved in terms of our students. Um, let's see, these are some good questions here. Okay. 
Okay, someone is asking, let's see here. Oh, wait, let me wait here. Okay, are students that enter our freshman program required to take calculus or pre-cal? Uh, so you will have to take calculus um, if you test in the math and it's um, required that you probably have to take a pre-cal before you take calculus and that's what will be required of you, um, but you will end up taking a calculus as well as statistics. Okay. Okay, let me see, I just wanna answer a couple more. Okay, someone is asking, what is our graduation rate? That's a great question as well. Uh, we're always, again, in the 90 percentile um, in terms of our, our students that graduate um, from our program. Um, if we um, enter freshmen that come in with 40, uh, we'll typically, right, graduate 38 or 39, as well as transfers. Um, this, this past year, past two years, we've admitted 26, so they haven't yet graduated. Uh, prior to that, we would um, bring in about 10 transfers. Um, and so again, about you know nine out of the 10 of them are graduate. So we do a really good job of making sure that our retention rate is really high and that we have all the resources for our students to be successful in our students. So that is something that we're really excited about and happy to really to, um, kind of, you know, to show. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna answer one more, and hopefully some of these questions my team will help answer as well. Okay. So someone is asking: Are students allowed to take a gap year at some point during the four-year program? Um, now, short answer: Allowed uh, would be. I mean, the university allows students to take a leave of absence, so we can't not let someone take a leave of absence. Now, a gap year is a little bit different. If you just were like, hey, I'm tired, I just wanna take a year off, you wouldn't be able to, uh, but you would have to have some type of circumstance in order to have a leave of absence. Uh, but our, the way our curriculum is set up is that we hope that our students will enter um, as a freshman or a transfer and be able to graduate within the three or four years. Okay, so let me continue on. Again, we're gonna make sure that we answer all these questions for you, um, but let's move forward in terms of time commitment. So usually says, uh, for each unit that is taken, they expect for you to dedicate at least three hours if it's inside or outside of the classroom, right? So if you're in your first quarter, if it's your uh, sixth quarter, right? Um, they're still gonna say, hey, in order to be successful, they want you to dedicate these hours. So let's say a quarter, for example, you have 14 units. They want you to go in at least 42 hours a week right, for inside or outside of that classroom. So that's why it's considered a full-time program, right? If we're thinking 40 hours is a full-time work week, they're saying you should dedicate at least 40 hours um, of your classroom work. And that doesn't include, um, you know, extra studying. If you're in the School of Nursing, if that's putting in extra work in terms of the simulation lab, um, if that is group work, if that's whatever the case is, um, we all know that you guys are going to be entering UCLA, which is a prestigious, a prestigious school, excuse me. Um, and so it's going to be asking a lot for you. But again, we have all the resources here on campus and in the School of Nursing to make sure um, that you'll be successful. Okay, so now let's kind of jump into the application. You guys have learned more about what our program is, um, the curriculum, how it's set up and what it looks like. Now let's jump into the application. There's gonna be two applications, okay? So you will be required to submit a UC application. It's available now though for those that are thinking about applying for freshman admission or as for transfers, but you will not be able to actually submit the application until I believe August 1st. It used to be November 1st, but we now it's uh, October 1st. Um, and so it give you about almost two months, but there is a deadline on November 30th. So. The last application will need to be submitted by November 30th of this year, 2023. For us in the School of Nursing, we also have our supplemental application, which is due January 15th, 2024. The reason why we separated the application is because we want to make sure that you'll be able to focus on the UC application submitted by November 30th, and then we give you about a month and a half to work on your supplemental application. 
if you submit your UC application early, uh, we will open up our supplemental application starting November 1st. So then you would really have even a couple more months to submit um, your application. I'm not gonna really go over the UC application because that uh, would be separate and that kind of would be a whole nother info session. But for those that are familiar with it, you are gonna have to complete kind of some insight questions as well as submitting other materials. But for today, I wanna talk about the materials that you're gonna have to submit for the school of nursing. There's gonna be a statement of purpose, there's gonna be a resume, and there's gonna be letters of recommendations. Okay, so for the statement of purpose, um, what we want you to do is in two to three pages, we want you to give a clear assessment of your goals. Um, I see Jamie's in here putting some really cool links. So definitely for those um, that have not taken a look at the chat, feel free to download all these links. But first thing we wanna do is, what we wanna know from you is, how do you wanna be a nurse, right? And so we want you to write from the heart. We don't want any kind of cliche answers. We don't want it to be written by you know AI. We want this to be coming straight from the heart. We want to know your reasons why you want to be a nurse. We also want you to give a clear uh, self-assessment right for success. How do you see yourself succeeding, not only at UCLA, but in the School of Nursing? You got to envision it before it happens. We also want you to talk about your goals in the nursing career, right? So what type of nurse do you want to be? We know it can change, right? Because we're asking before you even start the program or immerse yourself in our clinical rotations or theory or simulation labs, and that's okay. But if you already have a goal in terms of what type of nurse you want to be, you want to hear it. Do you want to be a travel nurse? Do you want to be a forensic nurse? Do you want to be a nurse maybe at the local school? Um, do you want to be a nurse in the military? What is it that you want to do with your nursing career? Do you want to maybe give back to your community? Do you want to serve maybe another community, other areas, um, maybe go across the world? What is it that you want to do with nursing? Let us know. This really helps us out. But we also want to know about your multicultural experience and diversity, right? So what does that mean? Um, what are you doing maybe in school, uh, part of clubs, organizations, things outside? What are you doing to diversify yourself and immerse yourself around all the different communities that we live in? doesn't matter if you live in LA, Los Angeles, or other parts. We want to see that type of experience. And provide some examples with that. Are you bilingual? Multilingual, do you speak different languages? If you do, talk about it. Describe how you're able to achieve it. Because we know within, again, Los Angeles, there's so much diversity, so many different languages being spoken. That's going to be helpful, right? If you're going out there and becoming a nurse. We also want to know more about you internally, right? So talk about and provide some um, examples of responding to challenges. Um, if it's in school, outside of school, whatever the case is. Uh, a really kind of easy example would be, right, if you're like, okay, what is that? What does that mean? Um, what would be being a first generation, right? Are you the first in your family to attend college? You would be the first to graduate. Um, if you or your family or may have suffered from an incident, an illness, whatever the case is, if it's social, economic, or academic, provide some examples. As you guys know, you're going to be in the nursing program in your third year if you're coming in as a freshman or your second year if you're coming in as a transfer, you may be in your early 20s or you may have some older students. That's okay. But as you're going out there and you're doing your clinical rotation, you're out there with patients, we want to make sure that you're going to be able to relate with them on any kind of level. We want to make sure that our students already have the traits that nurses possess, but also, right, compassion, um, uh, empathy, um, being able to relate. We want to make sure that you can see yourself in their shoes and provide the best assistance and care for them. Um, also, any other accomplishments, right? If you're a captain of a sports team or you're the you know first chair in a, you know, a musical or in a band, whatever the case is, let us know. We really want to know more about yourself. Uh, we have a holistic approach in terms of the individual that we want to select. So we really want to get to know you. If we're going to talk about um, that we want to say, hey, in two to three pages, because that's not enough, let us know why you want to be a nurse. We're going to say, okay, well, 
we also are going to ask for two letters of recommendations. So of that, we will say um, to you that we hope that you choose your two best recommenders. They can come from anybody in a professional setting, just no family or personal friends. So they could be a teacher, they could be a professor, they could be a supervisor, a counselor, an advisor, a manager, a supervisor, even a mentor. We want you to make sure that the people that you choose, that they are from a professional kind of setting, um, they may have seen you in some type of educational or, um, or volunteer kind of experience um, or some type of relationship to where they'll be able to speak about your ability um, for your potential success in the program, right? So it can be if you've volunteered somewhere and that person is a nurse or physician or doctor, or if you've gone through a certification uh, program, um, they can be your, your recommender. We just want you to choose your best two. Our recommendation, it does work a little bit different, right? So not just you going to them and saying, hey, can you write me a letter of recommendation? Um, first, you wanna ask them that. Um, but then two, if they say yes, say, okay, well, you're gonna be receiving a link from the School of Nursing to complete a recommendation form, okay? So when you get into the supplemental application, it's gonna ask for you to put your recommender's name and their email address. You're gonna be able to then put the information down. Once you submit your application, they will get the link. If you remember, we have a January 15th deadline for our application. The letter of recommendation link is not sent to them until you submit your supplemental application. So if you wait until January 15th to submit, what we want to do is give you recommenders an additional 10 days to submit. So they will actually have until January 25th. If you submit your application on January 1st, they will have 25 days to, to complete. Whatever the case is, you're gonna to have to submit your supplemental application on January 15th, and then submit your, um, or have your recommender submit the letter recommendation by January 25th. Last, we're gonna ask for a resume. So hopefully you guys know how to write a resume, have started to write a resume, or been doing it for years. Um, but with that, we want you to list it in chronological order, the highlights of your education, right, on is received. For, again, the school that you're currently attending. We want you to put your work experience, we want you to put your volunteer experience, and again, any professional organizations or associations that you belong to. Again, put your accomplishments in there. And if you can, provide um, some backdrop in terms of what it is that you've done, right? And give us a brief description again of your experiences. Um, that's really gonna be helpful. Also, again, put your accomplishments in there. Any other creative experiences, creative works, we want that to all be in resume format. Typically, you guys might be thinking, hey, I know a resume can only be one page, right? Especially if we're thinking like a professional or, or work resume. But for us, good thing is that it have to be a page. You can extend it. Uh, we have it where individuals write two, maybe even three pages worth of a resume or a CV, um, and that's okay. We just wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to put down everything that you think is important and necessary for our missions team and our faculty to know. So um, with that, I'm gonna pause really fast and see if I can answer some more questions because I see like my team is doing a great job of answering that. And so let's see here. Let's see. Okay, someone is asking, is there a course equivalency guide for UCLA School of Nursing in terms of the nursing prereqs? So that is a great question. Um, the School of Nursing, well, so let me back up. If you've heard of assist.org, that is what I would recommend you do if you are attending a community college here in California. So it's www.assist.org. You'll be able to put in your community college and then match it up with school here if it's a UC or a CSU. If you are attending a four-year university or maybe out of state, unfortunately, we do not have those. Um, and so you can contact me directly if you're an out-of-state student. Um, 
and you can send me your unofficial transcripts and I'll be able to take a look at those. But again, if you are a community college student here in California, please visit assist.org, which is www.assist.org. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, so great question. So someone's asking, is there a separate application for transfer admission? Um, no. So what I just went over um, is going to be for those that are going to be applying for freshmen and transfers. It's going to be the same requirement. So we will be asking for freshman admission and transfer admission to complete or submit a statement of purpose, two letters, recommendations, and a resume. It's a good question. Okay, someone is asking, what is the minimum uh, grade requirement for each course? So let's talk a little bit about GPA requirement for both for those that are interested in freshman and transfer admission. For those that are interested in, in applying for freshman admission, uh, there is actually no GPA minimum requirement that the university requires. The average GPA typically of students that we admit for freshman admission is about a 4.2. And of course that is weighted. For transfer admissions, we have a minimum GPA requirement for entry, which is a 3.5. So we are asking for a 3.5 minimum GPA requirement. That includes your general education courses as well as your transfer prerequisite courses. Our average GPA for transfers is about a 3.85. Okay, now let's talk about once you are a student in the nursing program. Um, university policy requires that you have to maintain at least a 2.0 in order to continue moving forward in the university. I hope that helped a little bit there. Okay, so let's ask some question for building a resume, which is more valuable, hospital experience or nursing home experience? They are both valuable. Um, it's really gonna be what you get out of your experience so, um, But both experiences are valuable, but it's really about all what you receive that you are able to um, experience and how you're able to articulate that within um, the essays. Okay. All right, someone is asking, what is the freshman um, admits? Um, what's the demographic breakdown? Um, do not know that off the top of my head. You can email me, but I do believe that we have it on our website. Um, but if you wanted to know that, you can send me an email and I can give you a demographic breakdown um, in terms of our students are getting ready to start this year. Um, it would just be for fall 2023. I don't have the demographic breakdown for all of our students. Um, but I do believe we do have something like that on the website though. So maybe Jamie, I think it might be, we could take a look. It might be in the about us kind of section. I feel like I glanced and saw that there. But if we do, she'll put, she'll give you a link. There's another good question. Given the schedule of classes, how possible is it to earn a minor? Great question. So there is a possibility for students if they enter as a freshman or even as a transfer to have the ability to uh, minor. Unfortunately, you would not be able to double major though. Um, so it doesn't matter if you were to enter as a freshman or as a transfer, unfortunately, you would not be able to double major. The minoring can be possible. Depends on the major in terms of the minor that you wanna select. Each major in order to receive that minor will require a certain amount of classes. Um, and so we would be able to help you with that um, in our student affairs office to ensure if you want to minor what the classes are that you need and how you're going to be able to fulfill those. Okay, someone is asking another good question. Um, is there a time limit for the prerequisites? No, there is no time limit for our prerequisite coursework. Okay, let's see. Is there an emphasis on work or volunteer experience or is it in the same, or is it seen the same? So that's a great question. It is um, not seen the same. 
Um, they are separated, but there's not an emphasis on one being uh, looked at more than the other. Uh, we would like to see your volunteer experience separately from your work experience. If you have one and you don't have the other, that's okay. Um, but one doesn't have more of an emphasis on the other. But we would like for you to separate that if you can. Talk about that in your statement of purpose. And then, of course, separate it in your resume. Someone is asking, do AP scores make a difference on the acceptance or basically your chances of being accepted? It does not. Okay. So I was asking, does nursing internship count as healthcare uh, exposure for a high school student who's a senior? Yes, it does. Good question. Any type of internship, volunteer opportunity, work, all of that that's centered around healthcare is going to be valuable. And we highly recommend that you talk about it in your essays. Okay. Let's see, sorry, just we have a lot of questions here. Um, I'll answer two more and then we'll continue. But again, we'll make sure to answer all of these here. Okay, someone's asking, do nursing students get kicked out of the program if they fail any classes after admission? Um, not necessarily, it depends on what the class is. Uh, but if you fail a class, depending again on what the class, you have the opportunity of retaking it. Uh, but if that depends. Um, again, once admitted into our program, we have a student handbook that outlines um, what is required for our students um, in order to stay in the program and in order to graduate. Okay, so what's asking, does the UC application apply for all UCs or only UCLA? So that first question, the UC application is for all UCs. So once you get into the UC application, you'll be able to select the campus. So if it's UCLA, if it's UC San Diego, if it's UC Riverside and so forth. And then it's gonna ask for you to select a major. Okay, all right, one more. Let's see, what do we have here? Let's see. <laughs> okay, here's actually a really good question. What makes our nursing program different from others? Now, that's a really good question that I'll stop at and answer and then we'll move forward. So um, this school of nursing, I, I provided kind of some information in terms of the different resources that we offer in terms of specialty coaches, mentorship program and so forth. But um, we think what separates us are one, the faculty that are going to be teaching you. I, I'll give this really cool example. Um, I'm a big sports guy, so I kind of try to equate things that make sense to me in sports. And so for professional sports um, or even high school or college, uh, there's a Hall of Fame, right? Which means this is the pinnacle, this is the, the, the best of the best that are recognized for the work that they've put in um, in their individual sport. It's the Hall of Fame. Well, in the school of nursing, well, I'm sorry, in the nursing profession, um, there is also what's called the academy, which is the highest recognition in terms of what our faculty are able to receive. That has to do with their teaching as well as their research. So um, we have close to half or even more than half of our faculty who are, who are inducted into the academy, um, which is pretty amazing. So what does that mean? That means you're getting the best teaching, right? Already off the bat, being taught by, you know, one of the best uh, clinicians, faculty members, researchers, um, not only in California and the country, but around the world, right? Something that's amazing. And then two, if you've probably heard me mention Ronald Reagan, hopefully you heard me say it's the number one hospital on the West Coast. That means you're gonna be doing your rotations, not only at Reagan, but our other affiliated teaching partner hospitals. You're gonna be at the best hospitals, being able to get the best clinical experience. You're not able to get that at other universities, right? And so what we offer both in the classroom and in the clinical setting is gonna be second to none. And of course you wanna make sure that you're getting the best teaching possible. That's gonna help prepare you uh, once you graduate. And again, so that's why we're only in the 90 percentile in terms of our graduation rate. 
and our influx pass rate, which is uh, our successors and indicators for once our students are able to graduate and move forward into the positions that they've been applying to. Um, so that is something that we're really proud of. And so we do, we do think that's what separates ourselves um, from other nursing programs. Okay, so just really fast, um, as you guys probably been seeing on this page, uh, you're seeing myself with my email address, Jamie, as well as Natalie. So feel free to email us if you guys have any individual questions um, that you would want for us to answer for you that we may not have time for today. Uh, feel free to reach out to one of us um, and or if you want to set up an individual appointment, you can do that as well. Okay, so again, um, last but not least, right, let's remember these application deadlines. These are very important. You want to make sure in order to be eligible for the UCLA School of Nursing, you're going to have to submit a supplemental application, but you're also, of course, going to have to submit a UC application. UC application is going to be due November 30th. And the supplemental application is going to be to January 15th. Please mark this down, take a picture of it, screenshot it. You cannot forget. For anyone who does not submit the supplemental application, it will not be reviewed for admission into the School of Nursing. Okay. So I'll take maybe a couple more minutes for questions, and then I'm going to get into Leone, who provided a um, video of the financial aid portion of today's information session. So I'll answer just a couple more and then we'll get into that. All right. Okay, some of these are kind of individual prerequisite questions. see. Come on, let's see. A lot of these are kind of individual prereq questions, which we'll answer. Okay. Hmm. Come on, let's see. Okay, here's one. Are some factors weighed more he uh, highly than others? So for example, is GPA more important than this, say, healthcare experience? So that's a good question. Each part of the application uh, is gonna be on a point scale. Um, and so you will get a certain amount of points for your GPA. Um, you'll get points for um, healthcare experience, points for volunteer experience, uh, your extracurricular activities, you'll get points for uh, what your recommenders write. Um, and so there's a very detailed oriented kind of score sheet in terms of what our reviewers will look at to score each applicant. But pretty much each score is almost the same in a sense. So um, you can receive the same amount of points for a GPA than you can for what your letter of recommendations write. Uh, to the different type of experience. So it's all factored and evened out, um, fairly fairly put together. Um, but you'll be able to receive points for everything that you put in your application. So that's a good question. Well, let's see. Answer one more, just trying to find a good one here. Okay, people are asking again, GPA requirements. Um, so there's been a lot of questions in that. So I'll just mention it again. For those that are applying for freshmen, the average GPA was a 4.2. For transfers, the average is about a 3.85. Okay, here's a good question here. What is your take on doing sports while being part of the School of Nursing? It's a great question. So this is something that we, for, for X amount of years, is we try to debunk that 
it's that people say it's not possible to be a nursing student and play sports. It is possible. We've had students in the past who participated in sports um, who have gone through our nursing program. We've had students from the baseball team, from the swimming team. Um, and even years ago, we had a student who participated in the gymnastics um, team who actually at that time when they won the national championship. So it's definitely doable. What we do is we partner up with the athletics department and the coaches to ensure um, that we can make sure that, you know, your, your um, game schedules or matches, wherever the case is, don't interfere with your clinicals and rotations and classes and things like that. So we definitely uh, want to encourage for those that are interested in playing sports to do that, or if it's intramurals. Um, you know, we've had a student who graduated, uh, I think this past year, the year before, who was uh, part of the rugby team. Um, and so, yes, that's something that we're huge advocates for. So that is a great question. Okay, so I'll take a quick pause um, and I'm going to do a new share and show the video um, for Leone and financial aid. Here we go. Hi everyone, my name is Leone and I am the Director of Financial Aid at the School of Nursing. Welcome to our information session. I'm so glad you have joined us. In this presentation, I will be sharing an overview of financial aid at the School of Nursing. And we'll be going over a few topics, starting with annual student fees, the cost of attendance, how to apply for financial aid, ways to fund your education, and important dates to keep in mind. Now let's begin with looking at annual student fees for your program. Annual fees are currently set at $14,132. If you are a non-resident, you will need to pay a supplemental tuition fee of $31,026. Fees are assessed quarterly, so a resident student would pay about $4,710 in tuition and fees each quarter. Student fees include UC-wide and campus-based fees. You can find a specific breakdown of all the fee components on the annual and term student fees page on the Registrar's website. Health insurance coverage is also mandatory for all students. Students are automatically enrolled in a UC-SHIP health insurance plan, which has a fee of $2,785 per year. The UC SHIP health insurance requirements and fees can be waived if you already have adequate insurance coverage. The cost of attendance, or COA for short, is an allowance based on educational expenses that students might incur. So this includes direct and indirect costs, and it's also the maximum amount of financial aid that students can receive during an enrollment period. Here you will see in the pie chart the different components of the cost of attendance. The total projected budget is currently $37,448. You'll see that the tuition and fees is just one portion of that. To begin the process of applying for financial aid, you will need to complete a financial aid application. To know which application to complete, you can reference the information in the table on the right. Most students complete the free application for federal student aid, or FAFSA for short. You can apply at studentaid.gov if you are a US citizen, permanent resident, eligible non-citizen, or a T visa holder. Students that are not eligible for federal aid can apply for state aid through the California DREAM Act application. You can apply at dream.csac.ca.gov if you are an undocumented student, have a valid or expired DACA, 
U visa holders have temporary protected status or meet the non-resident exemption requirements. The application opens up on October 1st of each year with a priority application deadline of March 2nd. You want to make sure to input our school code 001315 so that we can receive your financial aid application if you will be attending UCLA. The outcome of completing the financial aid application is that your expected family contribution is calculated. And this determines your eligibility for financial aid. Now, you can fund your education in a combination of ways through grants and scholarships, loans, and or work studies. Grants or scholarships are gift aid that you won't have to pay back. And these include grants like the Federal Pell Grant, the Federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, a Cal Grant, the Blue and Gold Opportunity Grant, the University Grant, and a UC SHIP grant for your health insurance. Loans, loan funding is borrowed money that you will need to pay back. And these include direct subsidized loan, the direct unsubsidized loan, a parent plus loan, dream loan for those that complete the California Dream Act application, and private loans. We also offer several work study programs. And participating in this, you earn uh, funding through employment. These programs include the federal work study program, the university work study program for Dream Act applicants, Jumpstart, America Reads, and various community service programs. Scholarship opportunities. So if you are a newly admitted student, you can complete the UCLA prospective undergraduate scholarship application. As a continuing student, you'll be able to complete the financial aid and scholarships general application for continuing students, which usually has a priority consideration date of June 30th. So we always recommend applying by then. We also offer a Regents scholarship, and this is a renewable scholarship that is based on merit. And we offer a variety of School of Nursing scholarships beginning your junior and senior year. We also always recommend seeking outside scholarships and expanding your overall scholarship search beyond just what UCLA has to offer. Now, before we conclude today's presentation, I would like to highlight a few important dates. So as previously mentioned, October 1st is when the financial aid applications open. You can begin filing your FAFSA or DREAM application as of October 1st. Now we start March 2nd because this is a big priority deadline. So make sure to apply for your financial aid by March 2nd. It's also the Cal Grant GPA verification priority deadline. So you want to make sure if you are Cal Grant eligible that your GPA verification form has been submitted. Usually between March and April, your provisional award letter becomes available, notifying you of your financial aid eligibility. And in May, the prospective scholarship application closes. Uh, if you missed the prospective, you can complete the continuing student application as well. You can find more information about financial aid on the website financialaid.ucla.edu or feel free to email me your specific questions at financialaid at sonnet.ucla.edu. Thanks so much for listening. Awesome. All right. I hope that was helpful um, for you all. I know it gives a quick snapshot again um, of what the admissions um, looks like once, you know, once you're admitted to the program in the financial aid kind of section, applying for it. That's for those that may be new to you, uh, the loans as well as the scholarships.
Um, but Lonnie does a really good job once a student is admitted, providing them um, all the documentation of what you're going to need uh, before the start of the year. Um, let me get back to this. And this does conclude um, our information session. Um, I do hope that you guys were able to enjoy this. I know we threw a lot at you in about an hour and a half in a sense, um, but um, we do hope this kind of helps kind of clarify and set forth um, your continued interest in the School of Nursing, um, as well as you know what it takes to submit a successful application. Um, if you would like, uh, please feel free to grab your phone, um, uh, scan this QR code and provide some feedback. Uh, we love to hear that. Um, but um, just want to once again say thank you for those that are here. Um, if you want to take off, um, feel free to do that. Um, but we're going to hang tight and answer some more questions for uh, the next uh, several minutes. So again, just want to say thank you for that. So feel free to continue putting your questions in the Q&A and I'll go ahead and answer those for you. Um, so keep putting those in there. All right. Okay, someone is asking, how does this program support students who have an interest in pursuing advanced practice? So that's a really good question. Um, so this program really, first and foremost, sets you up to um, have an outlook in terms of preparing yourself to become a registered nurse. Um, if you are thinking about advancing your degree, becoming a nurse practitioner, maybe getting your doctorate, uh, that's where um, myself comes in, as well as our faculty members, but we want you to reach out to us individually so we can help set you up with that. Um, but the program doesn't provide like assistance in the sense that um, you're going to be able to take some gradual level work or things of that nature. Uh, but there is overlap, right? So depending on if you want to get into peds, we have a pediatric nurse practitioner program. Or if you're thinking adults, we have an adult general uh, primary program and so forth. So, or again, if you want to think about doing research and getting your PhD or DMP, um, but we have resources to help with that. But it's not necessarily built in within the program itself. Okay, someone is asking, can you choose clinical rotations or does someone choose it for you? It's a good question. So we actually do that for you. So we choose it, um, we set it up for you. Uh, now, when it comes to you doing your um, immersion, that's where you're gonna have the opportunity of, of selecting where you want to do your rotation. Uh, but besides that, you don't necessarily have a say unless it may be for other reasons. Um, transportation or you know, collision or anything of that nature. But we do work with you. Okay, let's see here. What else do we have? Right. Do you accept students who do not have healthcare experience? Yes, we do. We do. Um, you're just really going to have to explain and articulate yourself in terms of why you want nursing if you don't have any experience in it, uh, which is going to outline and provide us a reason in terms of ensuring that you want to do nursing when you don't have any experience in it. Uh, but we've had students in the past who are able to do that. So it's all about your why, right? Why do you want to become a nurse? It's a good question. Okay, so someone is asking, do you need to get into UCLA first um, before um, applying to UCLA or getting into the school? I'm sorry, get it. do you have to be admitted to UCLA before applying to the School of Nursing? Uh, no, you do not. So you'll still apply to UCLA as well as the School of Nursing. Um, and then you find out your admissions in the springtime. So you'll still be required to submit both. And someone is asking, what date is the acceptance announced? Uh, we do not know. UCLA doesn't let us know until the day of. 
um, but it is during the spring. Um, and so everyone who submits an application to UCLA will find out all on the same day. Okay, what is your advice for the best way to find school life um, balance at UCLA? A great question. Um, I say just immersing yourself um, around what UCLA has to offer, um, finding your friends that are nursing classmates as well as friends that are other majors. Uh, but then participate in all the things that UCLA has to offer, right? You don't wanna just put your head down in the books, study, 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 look up four years or three years, you graduate and you didn't have any fun, right? So the best way to have kind of a school life balance is to enjoy what UCLA has to offer. If that's Greek life, clubs, going to games, going to our museum, music festivals, everything of that nature. Uh, but in the School of Nursing, we also try to do a good job uh, providing things for you as well. If it's an ice cream social, um, if it's the emotional dogs, we have those, which is pretty cool. Uh, we put on movie events, and we have tons of other things that we do in the School of Nursing as well. Um, so we definitely want our students to um, enjoy their time here. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Someone's saying, is there a chance to understand more about nursing at the UCLA Open House? That's a good question. We will be at the UCLA Open House if uh, you wanted to talk to us. But if you want to learn more, if you did feel like you didn't get enough of today's info session, feel free to email us directly and uh, we can set up an appointment with you. Okay, someone is asking, does taking honors classes at a community college have a positive impact on the application? So that's a great question. We didn't, um, short answer would be no. Uh, what we require for a transfer applicants is to complete your IGETC along with our nursing prereqs. So if you take honor classes or if you're, if you're part of TAG or honors, um, it doesn't necessarily boost your chances of being admitted. But that's a good question. Okay. Let's see. Okay, someone is asking, can we talk about the different environments that are um, that RNs can work in um, other than a hospital setting? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's you name it. Um, they could be nurses and working at a university, working at elementary, middle school, high school. Um, you could be a nurse in the military. You could be, again, kind of, kind of stay like a forensic nurse. Um, there's nurses that work on planes and you know, on helicopters. Uh, those travel nurses, I mean, in nursing, you can work in any capacity that's outside of the hospital. And I think that's the cool thing um, within the profession is that you can do it all different types of ways. So it's really about what you want to do or maybe you experience it. And I think that's cool. Okay, so let's ask what classes be on campus. Um, or would they be taken online? So good question. So cl all classes are in person and on campus. So we do not offer any online or hybrid courses. Okay, someone's asking, what can I do to boost my chances of being admitted? So it's kind of everything we we're kind of talking about in terms of the application process um, is making sure you know your why. Why do you want to be a nurse? Um, that's the first thing. What type of nurse do you want to be? And then gaining experience in it. Right, so immerse yourself around the patient population, maybe some nurses, doctors, physicians, learn about it and really see yourself uh, become a nurse and then you're gonna be able to articulate that. Um, so to boost your chances is we really wanna admit students that want nursing, that wanna stay in nursing, wanna transform nursing, transform nursing science, wanna make an impact um, in the communities that they're gonna serve. 
So it's all going to be about how you articulate that. Uh, okay. okay, someone's asking, what is the most important important part of the application? All of it is. So there's not one part that's more important than the other. Uh, your essay, your letters of recommendations, and your resume. So it's going to be a three-parter uh, that we're going to all going to look at all heavily and highly um, to ensure that we're going to be selecting the right students. So all parts of it are going to have to be strong. Um, so yeah. Definitely all of it. Well, let's see. Okay. Does shadowing a doctor make me appear more competitive? Not necessarily. Um, if you want to get into nursing, we'd recommend that you shadow a nurse before you shadow a doctor. Um. Is nursing uh, the only major that offers clinical education at UCLA? Um, are there other majors to offer clinical education in the hospital setting? Great question. As an undergraduate, nursing is the only one. Uh, so yes, nursing is the only way you'll be able to get clinical experience. Okay, someone's asking, how do you go about shadowing a nurse? Um, contact your local hospital or your local clinic, nursing home, to see if they have any volunteer opportunities. Um, that's the best way to go about it. Um, reach, call the hospital, go up to the hospital and see if there's any way you can shadow a nurse. Um, for anyone in a healthcare setting, that's the best way to go about doing it. Each hospital, clinic, nursing home, small area, um, could potentially let you do that. Or they may have different requirements uh, that they're gonna ask for you to do. So definitely uh, do that. Okay, let's see. Thanks. I see some people are still hanging tight, asking questions. Just going to get some of the these here. Okay. Someone's asking, as a BSN student, how valuable is it to continue participating in research, in nursing research after high school? Um, I mean, it's valuable if you are thinking about wanting to do research in the future, uh, but uh, research, doing research isn't required for our students, uh, but you can, again, volunteer with our faculty on the research if that's what you want to do. Um, but yeah, we definitely highly recommend doing research if that's what you want to continue doing, but it's not required of you. Okay. I was asking is non-patient contact volunteer role at a major hospital considered healthcare experience? Uh, yes, it is. Um, but um, if it's at a hospital, you know it's non-contact, non-patient contact, but again, you wanna talk about what your role is, um, how it's important and how it's helped you in terms of your outlook in terms of why you wanna do nursing. 
So again, and that could be any capacity. If you were to look at any type of experience that you're gaining, just look at how is it helping you to learn more about the profession and, and how is it um, providing, providing like a jolt in terms of like, yes, this is exactly what I want to do. Okay, there's one question here which I want to leave as the last part of advice because it's a really good question. So let's see here. Okay. So if there are questions here. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so I was asking, is there a difference um, to get into the nursing program uh, if one was to work at UCLA Health? Uh, no. So it doesn't matter if you work or even volunteer at UCLA. Um, it doesn't mean that your chances would be higher than the next person. Um, we look at experience coming from all different areas. Different cities, different states, it doesn't matter. Okay, All right. as a senior high school, uh, how are we able to contact nurses? And that's another shout out one. Um, again, as a high school, you have to just contact your local hospital, contact your local clinical setting area and just see if they offer it. Um, again, we don't have the answer because we don't know where an individual lives, um, but there can be an instance where um, some facilities will let you shout them. So they have an age, age requirement, right? And so that part sucks, but Again, we just say kind of do the research and see if there's one that's uh, around you. Um, if you're unable to shout out on there, see if there's any other type of healthcare experiences that you could do. Okay, here's a really good question. Um, do first years have to live on campus? Um, you're not required to live on campus, um, but the university does um, allow up to three years to stay on campus though, but it's not required. Here's another good question. Do you guys consider what applicants are doing during their senior year of high school? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, as well as um, you're still gonna have to be required to maintain your GPA um, and or still maintain um, uh, your grades, right? So you, you know, can't fail even if you're in your senior year. So all of that is very important. Okay, so let's see, all right, there's some questions here. Is there a separate boarding room for nursing students? So is there a separate, um, uh, I guess, dorm room for our nursing students? No, so that's a really good question. Um, no, um, our nursing students will be fully immersed with uh, other UCLA students on campus. And you would want it that way, right? Because you're going to be seeing your classmates for three to four years. And so you would want to live with, uh, you know, other students on campus. Okay. We'll take another minute or two to answer some questions and I'll leave us with this last kind of thought.
Um, let's see. We'll just take another minute or two. I do want to leave you guys that are for those that are still hanging with us um, to check the chat. Uh, make sure that you're downloading all of those links. Um, and be able to refer to those. Okay. All right. So uh, someone asked a question, what is the last piece of advice for a student seeking to apply to the nursing program in terms of the application? So this is a really good question and I want to kind of leave it as the last thought uh, as a takeaway for you guys. Um, it's kind of what I've been writing and telling people is make sure you know your why, right? And so when I say your why, you know, why do you want to become a nurse? Um, we all have our different reasons in terms of why we want to become a nurse, um, but we're hoping that as you are going from your why, um, what are the other next steps, right? To really learn more about it. Um, that could be, again, what are your potential goals? Or that can be your experiences. Uh, double down on your why. Really immerse yourself. If that's just talking to people on the street or talking to a nurse uh, that you ran into at the grocery store um, or at the bus, uh, wherever the case is, really know your why and continue really learning why you want to become a nurse make it your kind of your daily thought um and i think that is what will motivate you um to learn more about it and, and immerse yourself in your clubs and organizations if it's outside of school things of that nature second is start um building relationships um with individuals right again if they're in the healthcare profession um, then they could potentially write you a letter of recommendation I mean, that part is amazing too. Um, so grab some mentors. Um, uh, learn more about what their profession is and what it takes, um, the ins and outs of it, the daily grind, uh, the good, um, the sad parts, right? The not so good. And envision yourself in there and how, you, again, you can transform and change nursing um, for the better. Um, and then last, Enjoy it, right? Enjoy the process in terms of applying, envision yourself entering the program, and then envision yourself um, being one of our brightest students, right? And so those three things we think are what's really gonna show in the application. Um, and at the end, um, you will be, you know, someone who's gonna be graduating, right? It goes by fast. If you're entering as a freshman, or if you're entering as a transfer. Um, so that's one of the last pieces of advice um, we hope to leave for you. But I'm going to hang tight maybe for another minute or so because I still see some questions coming in. And then we will let everyone go. So again, thank you for everyone for hanging tight. Okay, so thank you, um, everyone. I'm seeing some thank yous. Uh, so I uh, just want to say thank you again for, for hanging tight. Um, I know uh, some people you know, took off, and I know it's dinner time, depending on where we are. So I just want to say thank you, everyone. Um, we hope to see your application. We hope to talk to you guys all soon. Uh, if you do want to meet with us, uh, feel free to reach out to us, set up an appointment. Uh, we'd love to see you at an open house, uh, whatever the case is. Um, so we're excited to see you um, in the new future and um, take care. So thanks, everyone. Oh, and also, thank you, Jamie and Natalie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, guys, take care.